Hello and welcome to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Holly and this is the second part of a series of videos about building Jack. We are a small family run business so in the background you may hear the dogs moving around or our daughter trying to make an appearance as well but we'll try and keep that down to a minimum. Just a quick recap for those of you who haven't seen the first video. The Jack model is designed to be built with frames that you can get as a kit from Roundhouse. They're a brilliant kit and they're designed to be bolted together. I've chosen to use my model um, with the frames that you can get from ourselves at Model Engineers Laser. That way I don't have to adapt the frames that come from Roundhouse. There's a bit of modification work in taking off the springs. You need to cut a section out here, which as you can see is quite a a small cut on the frames and if you don't want to do the work and you want a precision cut you get pre-welded frames. The other added bonus to that is the bolted together frames from Roundhouse have additional stretchers to give it its strength because this is welded they don't need those extra stretchers. For those of you who are going to build your model with the Roundhouse frames I will do another video about how to put those frames together but that's not this video because this is going to be my model and I each in to get started and build on my loco. The first challenge that we need to address is putting the bushes in the axles for the for the axles to go through. Um, you can make bushes if you're super keen, or you can do what I've done, which is use a press and take them out of the frames that you get from Roundhouse because they're exactly the same size. It's exactly what we need, and I don't see any point in remaking something we've already got. So these have been popped out of the roundhouse frames ready. And then you need a 516th, I think this one is. Yeah, 516th Rima. This one here. Now I have already started, you can see where the paintwork's come off. The holes that we cut on our parts are slightly undersized um, to ensure that you get a really snug fit with these because they're not glued in, they're just pressed in. So I, like I said, I've already sat there and worked through this because watching me just rotate this through there is going to be incredibly boring. Um, so you want to make sure that you can get the reamer quite easily through on those, which these ones do, because like I said, I have already done that. It would be a noisy, boring part to a video sitting me, watching me do that. Um, and then if you need to, make sure you've got just a little round file just to take off any burrs that you've got from the reamer. Um, you can see where I've already done that with the paint coming off. And then we want to press these back in and make sure you do them from the outside of the frame in. So that, that, I mean, it will go in once it's pressed on, I haven't got a strong enough grip. So that's the next job is that I'm just gonna pop outside to the press now and push those in with my press tool. Uh, and then I will come back and finish off the next section. So I'm back. We've put these through the press. And you can see that they're fitted in there from the outside, not the inside. That is very important. Um, because they've gone through the press and they're tight fit, the insides of the bushes may have collapsed ever so slightly. So at this point, um, if you can get a quarter inch reamer to go through, um, Another good thing we're doing this is they may have not gone through perfectly straight. So to make sure that they're in line for your axles, if we just, there you go, let's see. That one. Took a little bit of work, but not a lot. So that is quite nicely lined up. There we go. That one goes through. There. And then we're going to do the same for this one. No, that one was okay. Okay, so it's slightly out of line. Okay, smidgen, that's it. Is that it. That's it, I've got it. So just a little bit of tweaking of the bushes on the inside to make sure that they're in line. That's come through. And I can't get it out. <laughs> there we go. I want to. That's the quarter inch reamer. And there we go, that's our bushes ready for our axles. So the next job we are going to be addressing is the rivets. 
Now, our frames already come with pre-drilled holes for the rivets to go in the buffers on the front and on the back. But because the rivets get glued in, we need to remove the paintwork and drill out the holes um, ever so slightly just to take the rivets because they are quite a snug fit. We're using um, rivets that are from Blackgates Engineering. We've got a big box of them here. I've got a massive box of them. Um, but like I said, these ones are particularly from Blackgates because that's where we get a lot of our stuff from. They're a good supplier. Um, these are 16th rivets that we're going to be using. They're um, tiny, but they do the job. Um, so the first job that we're going to do is with our user Dremel. This is a Poxman, just a little handheld drill really. I don't know how. That's not too noisy. You should be able to still hear me over. Now, I personally am going to drill out the holes first and then sand off the paint because it will also take off the burrs to allow the rivets to sit snug. Um, I'm going to do this on camera and also slightly cack handed. It's not on a particularly fast speed, it's, I think it's on its slow setting because we are just taking out the paint in a little bit. I'll make sure you can see what's on the camera. Never had to think about somebody else's perspective before. There we go, so it didn't take a lot. Obviously, making sure your fingers are clear. I mean, ideally, you want to be going to do this in a bench. I think I'm going to put this in my voice. That's going to spend a lot of time you watching me drill a lot of holes. I'm going to go and put this in my bench and go and drill them all through. I shall be back very, very shortly. I'm back having done the drilling. I'm not going to lie. It took me longer to walk down the garden to put it in the clamp than it did to actually drill the holes out. They're a pretty good size. You are literally just taking the paint out. Oh, I've just realised that. It, it's a 1.7 drill bit. I didn't tell you that. 1.7 mil drill bits take the paint off. They went through quite nicely. Um, another job to do while well, I had the drill out, um, I didn't use it on the drill, I actually used a proper drill, was to get a, a bit of scrap metal um, that's the same thickness as the plate of your phone. So it's 1.5 thick. And just to drill um, a set of holes in there don't, you don't have to be particularly neat this is so we can trim the rivets later um but you'll see that contraplay so while you're out drilling your bits uh the holes out drill a set of holes in there and that'll come into play later because the rivets are purely cosmetic they have no actual function whatsoever we do just glue them in so the next job i need to do is just take off this top, top layer of paint i can't get my words out today take off this top layer of paint so when we glue the rivets in they glue to the metalwork and not the paint and it'll just make them a bit sturdier going forward um i'm just going to go and grab a bit of emery paper and do that now so just went out to the workshop to get a bit of 120 um, emery, some wet and dry paper. However, I haven't got any 120, so we're having to do it at 240, which is not a problem. Um, but 120 will do just fine for yourselves. And I'm just going to take off that top layer, well, take off the paint completely. Um, I'll pause the video because yet again, that'll be really boring you watching me sand all this down. So I shall be back in soon. I'm back. Um, so I've done all of my sanding. As you can see, I've got all the paint off just around where the rivets are going to be glued in. There we go, yeah. So that is all prepared, ready for my rivets. And I've just dusted it down. Obviously not done a good job to get all the paint dust off and you can see it all over the table as well but that's okay. So the next job that we need to do is get the rivets ready and the right length. So as I showed you before these rivets are quite long um, and just to make it easier as a demonstrate I'm going to put one through a hole backwards. Sorry. So that is the full length of the rivet sticking out the sides so we need to trim that down 
before we glue it in. And this is where that little plate I talked about earlier comes in. So I'm just going to put that to the side because we don't need that. So earlier when I was drilling out the holes, I said to try and find a bit of scrap metal that's the same thickness as the framework. And that is so we can cut down our rivets to the same length so they don't protrude out the back. Um, the reason I've said drill multiple holes is because we need over 30 of them. Now, the way I'm going to do this, again, because I like to make life easier for myself, is by putting a rivet in each one of the holes. I've got five in my little jig that I've got set up. Through here. There you go, so that's all five. And then five, it's a very oversized piece of wood. It's actually um, a side of a box that we provide that didn't make the grade. It's got pencil script all over it because it wasn't a good enough quality that we like to issue out. So it, it got demoted to the scrap pile. So you're trying to clamp those down so the ends stick up and you get a nice tight fit. Your rivet heads sandwiched between the wood and the metal of your jig and then these are sticking up so when we cut these down and file them down you know they're going to be the exact thickness that you need for your framework this next part of the job um honestly make sure there are no little people and dogs and that your eyes are protected because when you we're going to cut these off and they fly. I've got indents in my ceiling from when I've done a job like this before. Um, so please, please be careful of your eyes and whoever else may be around. And it is a matter of, did you hear it hit the ceiling and then the floor? Um, it's a good job I do all the tidying up, isn't it? Because I'm the only one that's gonna have to tidy up after myself. <laughs> They're like little rockets. <laughs> And that is why I said be careful of your eyes. So we've cut them all back. As you can see, they're still quite... If I put my finger behind, can you see it better? It's actually made it worse. So they still protrude out quite a bit. So whilst they're still in the jig, we're going to file them down. And this is what we do five at a time. I'm not pausing the video because this shouldn't take me too long. Obviously, if you can clamp yours to a table and make your life easier, that's wonderful. But I'm trying to do it so you can see it on camera. So they're all now flush with the metal, so I can unclamp my little jig and they're wedged in there nicely and you will need something just to pop them out because they'll have little burrs on them that hold them in the jig. There we go, and I've got five teeny tiny rivets that are the right depth for my frame. The next thing I would say, so you don't forget, is you're going to have a tiny little burr on them. Just roll them in your fingers on the stump there because when you come to glue them in your frame, if you haven't taken that burr off, the chances are that you're not going to get them in the frame. 
And because of that, your glue's going to be messing about with it and you're going to start flapping about it. That your glue's drying and it's going to make a mess and you can't get the rivet in and you end up glue with all over your fingers. Do you always sound like somebody who's experienced this before? <laughs> Not building a steam loco, but generally gluing things with rivets. Anyway, so there we go. That's just, so that got a little pile going on there. It's literally just the tiniest of burrs and this file's probably well, well too big for this job, but I've got it in my hand and it will do the job very quickly. There we go. So that's five down, only another 25 to do. I'll be back soon. And I'm back. I have actually ended up doing 35 rivets because my little jig held five. I need 34 for the buffers. Um, and I know I'm going to lose one along the way. So I'm using just some Gorilla Glue. I've used it before for other things. I know it's pretty sturdy. And I've put a small amount here because it dries very quickly. Hopefully you have better look than I will because you're not trying to film it at the same time. Hey, <laughs> cut it in. I'm going to save my embarrassment there and carry on doing the rest of them, not on camera, because um, I don't want you all to carry on laughing at me. I should be back once they're all glued in. So I'm back. I'm not going to lie, that was quite difficult, but they're all in now. And I definitely, definitely got quicker as I had some practice. What I, You can tell that I have done it all in one go, look, because that's still wet glue. <laughs> um, what I ended up doing to make it easier, having asked Ed if there was any tips he had for making it easier, the answer was nope. Um, I would use the tweezers to align the rivet through the hole and it would always end up on an angle. I couldn't get it to sit straight with the glue. So I ended up just using my thumb just to knock it in. I know covered in glue, but it'll come off. It's not, not the end of the world as long as I don't glue myself to the frame or the table itself. So they're all in now. Um, I think we'll call that an end to this video while we let that dry and I'll go and tidy up and we'll join you in the next video. Thanks ever so much. Just don't forget to subscribe at the bottom and like this video and then you will continue to get updates as I post further progress. Thanks for joining again. Bye.